Mark in the Orville. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to talk about this episode. Twice in a Lifetime is, well, first of all, I'm a huge Orville fan. You can see my Orville pin. I have my Orville coffee cup. I'm jamming over here. It's um, always good to have some Orville merch, you guys. Absolutely. And it's official. I bought it on the site. This is, I don't have my bootleg stuff. I do have a bootleg like Funko great. because they deserve Funkos and don't have official Funkos, but whatever. Oh, I wish I had a Funko. I mean, we've been talking about Funko Pops for years when it comes to the Oroville. Yeah. I mean, not not the the most, you know, uh, uh, coolest of, of, of action figures, okay, but though. still pretty neat. They're pretty fun. Pretty neat. Yeah, pretty good for an Orvillian. Thank you, Archmage Frey. Archmage Frey. Frey says, happy birthday, JP. You don't look Yay. a day over 26. <laughs> well, you add 20 more years and you, you'll you're, you'll be right on where I'm at. Uh, Renee. Yes. Um, now, you said you're a fan of the Orville. How much of a fan of the Orville are you? When did you start your Orville adventure as day a fan? One. Day one. Day one. Yeah. And I mean, look, when I found out, what when I got the script for this episode and I read mm -hmm. it, I ran around my house like a lunatic. I grabbed my husband and I'm like, do you remember the episode Lasting Impressions from season two? This is a continuation. This is a callback to that. I was so oh, excited. Wow. I couldn't believe it. Forget whatever I was doing. That wasn't important. I was more about the script and this story. Yeah, you and know where it was coming it from. It. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and how did you get the call to 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 read for this part? So I, I obviously I'm an actor. Um, uh, Sheila Jaffe and Gail Goldberg's office called me in. Uh, shout out to them and their assistants, uh, Laura Johnson and uh, Jake Warneck, I think was uh, Warnecki. They were um, all involved in this happening. And thank you to them for calling me in, because had they known I was such a super fan, they probably never would have done it. You know, I think you're right. I Yo, think yeah. you're right. If, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. I, I mean, when I was on, when I first walked on, when they brought me on to set and they introduced me to Seth, there was a bunch of crew people and Seth. And mm -hmm. the very first thing I said to Seth was, I am so happy you were able to create a role on earth so that I could be on your show because they don't let fat people in space. And everybody erupted into laughter. I, I have well, since lost 50 pounds <laughs> since that role. So I will you say- You look great. You yes, look absolutely you. great. Thank you. But you know, yeah. that was my that was my introduction to Seth MacFarlane, me making a fat joke. So, you know. <laughs> well, he, the guy likes jokes. Yes, he does. I mean, he actually, the, it's funny, the, he laughed and then he caught himself because I think he was like, can I laugh at that? And I was like, yes, like, I am you the have boss. permission. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because he, he's coming from, uh, he wears a lot of hats. He's the actual boss. He's the manager, basically, if, yep. if this were a business. Well, yep. it is a business, but if it was an office, he would be the office manager. Absolutely. Uh, and and beyond. Absolutely. Uh, when I first met him, yeah, he started off with a joke because I met him after the premiere of uh, of episode one of the Orville. Nice. I was at the premiere. He invited me over and I, he finally comes up to me and he says, was the music too loud? And I'm like, because, you know, the guy's into music. And, yeah. so, and I'm like, no, no, it was perfect. Uh, yeah. You know, it probably wasn't loud enough. I can still hear people's dialogue, so yeah. it, it wasn't too loud. And it's um, also, you know what, he cares so much about the work he does that, I mean, you know, I, I was lucky enough during the shooting to have some time with him. I had actually, during, while we were shooting the, actually my scene as the realtor, um, mm -hmm. we had some downtime or sipping some uh, smoothies and I was chatting him up and I said, you know, I just found out I booked an Aaron Sorkin film. The I played the grape stomping lady with Nicole Kidman in, in that movie and um, the Italian woman. And he I was love, like, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's fine. That movie. He was like, that is, he, he, we started talking then about Aaron Sorkin and his writing and his mm. directing. And, you know, so we had like really cool conversations and I also admitted to him that I'm a huge family guy. Uh, nerd as well. I watch Family yeah. Guy every Family Guy every night before I go to sleep. So, you know, I'm probably not his demographic for that show, but I do love it. I do love it. Well, that was the show that probably started out with a certain type of demographic in mind, and yep. then you know absorbed a whole uh, you know spread out to a lot of different types of people. Just like with the Orville, the Orville Absolutely. was probably meant for you know nerdy dudes who yep. loved uh, t uh, the next generation. I was, yep. was hoping to get some more of that going on yep. and, and they did. Yeah. Uh, but now so many people uh, from all walks of life are absolutely in love with the Orville. I've been following all their tweets and, and social media messages since 2017. So yeah. it, it, it's nice to be able to, because I've interviewed a lot of people from the Orville 
and they are all fans of the show. Yeah, absolutely. But from working on the show, they're fans on the show. But you were an actual television screen fan yep. who, who got to, to show up. Now, when you got the call, when you got it, you knew you were reading for it, but you didn't know you had you, you landed the gig. What happened when you got the call that you are going to be on the show? Hopefully you don't hear my dogs. I don't know if you can hear my dogs. Can you hear my dogs? I'm sorry. If I hear them a little bit, okay. but I got some dogs in the other room. <laughs> okay. um, so I would say, so it was a self-tape. It was during pandemic. So we were all still masked yeah. up. It was, um, you know, self-taping had just started. I filmed it in this very room I'm sitting in right now. Um, I sent it in. And like I do with every other audition, I send it and I forget it. I'm like, oh, yeah. that was so much fun. That was my moment. I got to be on the Orville in my in my little self tape room. Yay. And that was it. I sent it off when I got the call that I was pinned, meaning I was one of the selections. Mm -hmm. Then my heart started pounding out of my chest. I was like, oh, my God, am I actually going to get to be on the Orville? And then yeah. when I got the call that I did book the role, I was just ecstatic. I couldn't I couldn't believe that I was going to get to do it. And then, you know, wow. I, I was like, I, like I said, when I walked in and met him, I, I was like, oh, thank goodness there was this part in, in 2025 on Earth that I right? could actually play on that show, you know, and it was what I it was such an experience. I mean, Seth, even though John um, Cesar is the actual director Cesar, of the episode, yeah. he mm -hmm. is um, I, I feel like he's the technical director and Seth gets in there and works with the actors and, yeah. you know, having him like come in and be like, your comedy timing is great. I was like. I, you know, the whole time I was just insanely uh, uh, gra grateful that I could be there and, and experience this and play with these people, working with Annie Winters, working with the incredible uh, Mark uh, Jacobson, is that his last name? Jackson, Jackson, uh, Jackson sorry. Mark Jackson, Jackson yeah. Isaac. Oh, yeah. For yeah. me, he's Isaac. You know, I, I had to, it took me a lot for me to learn everybody's names because I was like, no, you're Isaac. Yeah, yeah. right. How was it like working with him? Uh, when you were acting with him, he was not the robot Isaac. Right. He was the skin suit Isaac. skin suit. I know. It was amazing. You know, the first time I heard him talk, you know, in my internal monologue while I was saying my lines were, oh, my God, I'm talking to Isaac. Isaac is standing here in his skin suit talking to me right now. You know, so yeah. it, it's that it's that way of 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 disconnecting, you know, your fangirl to your to your. Uh, to your actor self. I mean, I had to do yeah. with Frasier too. When I act with Kelsey Grammer, I'm like, oh my mm -hmm. God, I'm standing here staring at Frasier. And I have to remember that his name is not Frasier. His name is Kelsey. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, uh, let, let's see, we do have, uh, throughout this whole conversation, it'll be, uh, the audience will be asking some questions. Please. Let's see what we got here. Chris Andrew says, hi, JP. Hi, Renee. I wanted to ask Renee how the set and the crew on the Orville compared to other shows. Great question, Chris. Um, they were wonderful, top notch. I, I've been lucky enough to have not really had any bad experiences on set. I've never been on a set where I was like, I, I will never go back to that show. Um, mm -hmm. Especially at this level when you're in, on network television or streamers or whatever. But they were fantastic. They were all uh, super helpful, super encouraging. You know, I, if you, you remember the episode, I go up these stairs and I peek mm -hmm. back down and say something quirky and then I run up the stairs. We had to do that several times just technically. And, you know, again, I was 50 pounds heavier. I had to keep running up and down those stairs. Up and down stairs. Not fun <laughs> no matter winded. what size you are. Yes. I was very winded by the end, but um, they were super encouraging and and just so nice. Um, and, and especially, again, Annie Winters, who played Charlie and uh, Mark mm -hmm. Jackson were just so nice. And, and, you know, sometimes actors, I have been on sets where actors that I'm working with the main people where mm -hmm. they'll go back to their trailers and never talk to you outside of your yeah. set. These guys, we all hung out all day. So, you know, we, we sat in the same place. We had conversation. It, it, it was really great. It was a really great experience. Thank you for that question, Chris. Yeah, that's a good one. Where did the shooting tech, I mean, you were, it was in a neighborhood. Was the inside an actual set? The, the inside of the house? The inside of the house was actually a practical house. We were, I want to okay. say Culver City, um, California. So we were in a house and and believe it or not, people here in California, guys, they rent out their houses and they let productions come in and take everything out of their house. So that oh, house wow. was a lived in house that they completely cleaned out. So it looks like it was a staged house for a realtor showing. Yeah, because so it's a that. rental. Yeah, it was completely bare. It was yes. completely empty. Yes. And then the basement was a set. 
So when we go down okay. the stairs and into the basement, that was done on a sound stage. All right. So that yeah. does that you went over to the Fox lot for that one? Yes, that was at the Fox lot. Absolutely. The good old Fox lot. Yeah. Um, I'm actually wondering if if uh you know, because there's the the news that some of us have, some of us insiders have the news that there is going to be a fourth season of the Orville. We just don't know exactly when they're gonna start production because Seth has a lot of content that he's making right now yeah. but once he's made what he has to make um uh they're gonna jump into to season four of the orville that's, that's let's what hope so is. i i wish i could say to you i have a big scoop for you and and that that was the truth i have heard him say there's more story to tell i have you know heard other actors say they're they're ready to jump back in whenever they say go so mm -hmm. i mean all we can do as fans is just like hope i thought ted yeah. wasn't coming back and then they announced season two and I was like, it's coming yes. back and it's in production right now. Yes, season it is. Two. I mean, yes, it won't it take is. very long. The first one didn't take, but a couple months. Yes. So it, uh, it's, unfortunately with streamers, I mean, I see this with Frasier too. We, we just don't shoot enough episodes, you know, 10 episodes is all we were doing for Frasier. I want to say that Ted was only eight, right? I think. Uh, I think six it was or less, eight. maybe seven. I yeah. Think it it wasn't a lot. Or six. It's, yeah, it's unfortunate they're... because the characters don't get to develop. Now, with something like Ted, at least that has a history. <laughs> so there, yeah. there is some stuff going on. But I'll tell you, Scott Grimes in Ted, oh, my God. And Scott Grimes so in, in Twice in a Lifetime, that guy, I'm getting chills talking about it. I know you can't see them, but chills. <laughs> he is such an amazing actor. And I, my only regret for, for my time there was that I didn't get to watch him work. You know what I mean? Yeah. We weren't in scenes together because we, we, we saw each other in, in a couple of lines on set. Um, the other, the other weird thing about my time there was it was COVID. So yes. we didn't have big group gatherings or anything. We were, and as yeah. soon as cut was called, someone came over and gave us our mask back. So it was mask, yeah. take it off go cut put your mask back on so it's a very weird experience um like i said though it was cool to like at least annie or annie and mark hung out and we got to have conversation but for the rest of the cast who was around i didn't get to have a lot of conversation with but i would have loved to talk to my fellow jersey and uh scott grimes and just tell him how fabulous he is as an actor and he killed it in that episode killed oh, it didn't he though he, i mean oh. just the fact that he had to play uh, a, a version of Gordon uh, in the, you know, 10 years older uh, that started a family yep. that's questionable. Should he have started that family or shouldn't he have started? That okay. Family? Listen, JP, I have, I have a lot of opinions on this. Okay. Good. There's I a lot think, of opinions to have. I think, and come at me guys. <laughs> I think Gordon and his family are fine in that split off universe. It doesn't matter that they went back and he never did that. It was already created. Again, yeah. I'm not a I'm not a scientist. I don't know all the theoretical reasons behind this, but I just think back to when Lamar was talking about that egg salad sandwich and he mm -hmm. was saying, oh, but if we didn't do that, it would splinter off and da 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 da. And I'm like, once it's splintered off, it's created. Whether you, now yeah. the 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 Gordon that they rescued, he's not going to be in that timeline. But I believe that that timeline still exists and goes on. Yeah, you and I are on the exact same page because I believe the same thing. I watch a lot of multiverse stuff. Me too. And 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 I'm right now watching a show called Dark Matter on Apple yes. Plus, which is a mind bender yes. with all the the multiverse stuff. I mean, you really have to pause and think and get your mind right and like, okay, I understand what's going on. Then you press play again. And, and I am of the same uh, opinion that Gordon and his family they existed. It happened. Yep. Uh, so therefore, it will continue to happen. There might be an, you know, there'll probably be an alternate uh, uh, timeline that was created right yep. then and there where it didn't, yep. where they did disappear. Yeah. Uh, and just like you said, the Gordon that we have now on the ship is from a, a, a pr you know, a previous timeline to yep. older Gordon's timeline yep. where that none of that did happen. So we got all these multiple timelines, even the Orville itself. From episode five in season one with Priya, yeah. uh, Charlize Theron, yeah. um, the Orville was supposed, to, in her history, the Orville was destroyed. Yep. And so right at that moment when she saved the Orville from the Dark Matter Storm, we split off into to a whole new universe. The, since yeah. episode five, the Orville has been in a, a, a an alternate mul multiverse, basically, an alternate sure. timeline. 
Absolutely. And listen, a lot of people get mad at uh, Ed and Kelly for being so upset with him. But I mean, I I got it. I got why they were upset. I mean, he basically yeah. stalked Laura and manipulated her to fall in love with him. So it was a little yeah. weird. And, you know, he and, didn't and no use did. other t- information that he had from the other timeline exactly. to, to adjust the timeline. Exactly. Exactly. But again, Scott Grimes can do no wrong. Uh, He's such a good actor. And that voice of his, when that episode opens up with him singing the song from, you know, the first, uh, from Mm -hmm. lasting impressions from the first time we saw Laura. All I've got to say. Yes. I think that song is, yeah. If I, if I wasn't already married, that would be my wedding song. (laughs) Well, you can always get remarried. That's true. And, and, and and redo it, Uh, have it be a multi-timeline uh, there you go. <laughs> I also want to thank Brian Dawkins. Brian Dawkins says, check your PayPal for lucky birthday money. Oh, thank Yay. you so much, Brian. I very much appreciate it. Well, uh, Brian man. is a, a huge um, supporter of Talking the Orville and the Orville. Nice. And a lot of other cool stuff. And I know, uh, Brian, you, you're you watching um, Mythic Quest. Such a good I show. Such a good show. Yes. We are getting supposed to be getting a season four of that show. Yes. Maybe you can get on that show. I hope so. That's another one with a lot of my comedy friends are on that show. So fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. My friend Parvesh was, was on that show. I think he's going to be, uh, you know, come. I, I would assume he's coming up again in the next season. Yes. And then Danny Pudi. Yeah. Anyway, that's I- Par- you, Maybe you those know, people will be Orville people. Um, Parv was on um, is on Frasier with me, uh, at least in season one. Really, I've yeah. only seen the first episode of the of the new Frasier. You need to at my... least watch number two. That's where I show up. Well, I would, but my <laughs> my trial is over. Uh, you know, they showed the first two episodes on CBS, which was great. You might be able to get those on demand on CBS still. Well, there you yeah. go. Check it out, Frasier, yeah. and you play Smokey on that Smokey. show, right? I'm a Who firefighter. Smokey. Yes. You're yeah. a firefighter. Yeah. And you, well, you've done like five. Six I did five episodes in season one. We're shooting season two right now. I've only done one so far. And I think there's like four left to shoot. They, But to be honest, um, Frasier this season has, oh, it's going to be so good. Season two is going to be so amazing. So many great guest stars that, I, again, they only do 10 episodes. I don't know how they can mm. write for everybody. So I, wow. I I don't know if if we'll have more. I, I, I expect we'll have at least one more. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I, we definitely won't have five like we did last year, but now with being on set for Frasier, are there still a lot of, uh, COVID regulations going on? No. on Hollywood sets. No, that actually ended, um, last May. I want to say it was during, or no, actually before that, uh, May is when the strike started. Um, whenever we started, I want to say March, it was March when we started shooting season one of Frasier, it, uh, it got in the middle. We got it. We all got texts that said the COVID regulations are now over. But you know what? I have to say, celebrated. It's still out there. I just yeah. had it for the third time three weeks ago. Oh no! Oh goodness! <laughs> I'm going to. Uh, I I've never had it, but I'm going to knock on uh, glass. I guess this tabletop <laughs> is to 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 hope I never get it. My husband's never had it either. You guys are novids. I guess. And or I, hermits. I, I don't know which. Do you ever leave the well, house? I said, well, while it was happening, I was a hermit for a bunch of years because I just worked full time on YouTube. Uh, now I'm doing well, I'll be starting YouTube full time again, hopefully this Monday, because uh, tomorrow I get to reapply for monetization. Uh, I've been demonetized nine months out of the last 12. And it dead. has been horrible. Uh, but doing that, uh, you know, trying to make ends meet, I've been doing uh, ride share driving. So I meet a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, but I make sure I take my vitamin C every day and don't get face to face with people. So far, it's been good. good. Knock on glass. I'll knock on wood for you. <laughs> so I'm glad to hear that uh, uh, the restrictions are loosened because uh, I know that for the Orville and when you were filming on the Orville, such high, very high uh, restrictive uh, regulations that they had to follow. Yeah, I, mean, I talked to Seth about it. He said they had a guy named Larry Brilliant who was in control of all, you know, making sure everyone was safe. And it, it looks COVID like man. everybody stayed safe. Yeah. Uh, uh, and you were saying that they're putting your masks on between takes and, yep. and after cut. Yeah. Uh, what other things did you, I'm sure you had to test a bunch. Oh, yeah. Just to show up. 
Yeah, you did. You had to test every day. Um, you had to test prior to coming. You had to test like a week out and then you had to test day of and then you had, you know, you would test throughout the time. It, it just was testing all the time. Now we did get any- we did get a little fee for that. So it was a nice little bump in our paychecks <laughs> for, right. for COVID testing. It's not usually the type of COVID bump somebody would want to no. find. But that's <laughs> but in that context, it, it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh uh, welcome, Barry. Barry says, "Damn, I'm late to the party. I had trouble getting that jar of pickles open again." <laughs> that happens. That's when you need to call your your best Salayan friend uh, <laughs> to to come and open that jar for you. Uh, yeah, there you go. Maybe you could play a Salayan. They could put some makeup on you. Please, uh, anything. And you can come back. You can yes. wear some space garb. You got to wear regular clothes. Yes. Uh, 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 with your work on the Orville, which is why you were so excited <laughs> that that uh, they had something on Earth. Uh, would you have preferred it to be the future Earth, the 25th century? Um, you know, it, I, I, look, I love what I did. So, you know, it was a fun, funny role. It was a funny little bit. So it, I enjoyed what I did. Um, I also got to play around on the on the actual set of the Orville. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, oh, yeah. I, I was able to kind of see the controls and play with everything. And, you know, so that was that I kind of got to do it, even though nobody got to see it. You know what I mean? Yeah. How, how fully re- realized when you were on the set, how fully realized was the actual set as being the bridge of, of a starship? Um, the bridge was, I want to say they were still building some stuff for the bridge or maybe they were uh, i don't know what they 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 were still paying so i didn't really i didn't really go to the bridge and stand where i was was in engineering where Mm -hmm. there's a big you know cut out for the for the drive and yeah uh obviously nothing there but you know you can imagine the the big tanks the control panels with all the electronics you know Mm -hmm. they're 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 practical they're there so it's not that stuff is not put in there there's actual screens with movements and things and you can see where you could just play with like you're pressing buttons and things are happening it is is really cool it's really cool to just be there and and just sit there in awe being a fan and and just soak it all in now as being a fan you're a day one fan of the orville yep. all the way back in 2017 you know what the ship looks like you know yep. the bridge you know yep. engineering you know all these rooms but you show up on season three and you get to see the upgrades. Uh, yes. H- how was that for you as a fan? That was amazing. I mean, that, that's what I mean, that they were still kind of putting finishing touches on the bridge. And it was just, there was some, ama- or I don't know if they were changed. I don't know what they were doing, but they were painting something. I don't know if they had had mm. to take it down. Sometimes sets are what's called swing sets, meaning mm. they'll build something, but then they need space for something else. So they'll take it down. Uh, that happens on Fraser all the time with the firehouse. Us fire people, mm. when we're there and it's a scene in the firehouse, they put that set back up and then they take it down the next week because they're not using it and they put some something else there. So the same thing probably happens on the Orville. So they were putting some touches on the bridge. It was cool to walk down one of the empty corridors. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, and you know, you can tell oh, that they, yeah. they change lights and stuff to make it, you know, seem like it's a different space when it's the same space, you know, yeah. a different we're section floating, of the show. We're floating through a corridor right now on the Orville. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. I can see it on the bottom there. Yes, that's what yeah. I'm talking about. Um. Uh, uh, you know, you're aware, you know, you're an Orville fan, but season three, what was your thoughts on season three? And what was your thoughts on your episode twice in a lifetime uh, uh, when it comes to being part of season three? So I, again, I absolutely love twice in a lifetime. I, I, I lasting impressions from season two was one of my favorites. So to have those tied together, um, it was just amazing. I think it was an amazing episode and I'm, I'm so proud that I'm part of it. And I, I think it's one of the highest rated ones of the season. Yeah. But when it comes to season three, the thing that I really loved about New Horizons was just the, the seriousness of it. And what I mean by that, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I like the funny slapstick, you know, humor. But I think that was always, it's always there. It's always underneath. And, mm-hmm. and it was starting to find its stride as an actual sci-fi show that mm-hmm. is right up there with any Star Trek, any Star Wars, any uh, any of the sci-fi shows that are out there today. It, yeah. it, New Horizons really upped the game for that show, I think. 
And I know some yeah. people well, miss the campiness of the of season one, but you could see every season it just got better and better. And then in season three, it got, you know, it, it multiplied by, you know, a hundred times. And it's, yeah. you know, and they probably just got more budget and, and were able, Seth was They got a lot to, more budget for season three. I hope season four has a similar budget. Yes. Because uh, they know how to take advantage of, the show knows how to really Use make every that budget penny. work for them. Yeah, every single Penny, I do know with the humor of the show that uh, John Favreau, who directed the pilot episode, yep. uh, Old Wounds, the, sh the show had a lot more humor, a lot more jokes in the script. And yeah. he told Seth, you got to take these. They're great. You got to take these jokes out, though, because the actual story you have is great. Yeah. He goes, I read the script. I can't I couldn't put it down. Yeah, um, that's great. And so ever since then, I think because John Favreau's advice uh, they've been working on, yep. you know, having the humor there. You can't not have the humor. It's the best part of the uh, one of the best parts of the show yeah. is, you know, we it's like we, you know, us and our friends are serving aboard a starship, which is any sci fi fans yeah. dream. Absolutely. Um, and then I know that the show also does not hire comedic directors ever since season one. They don't they all hire dramatic directors, nice. action directors. Because even though there's a lot of jokes, um, they say all the jokes are, tr are, are, you know, treated in a serious manner. Yeah. So the people saying these jokes, it's all serious. Yes. So we want to film it seriously. Yep. And then that'll bring up the, the, the humor even more. Yeah. I mean, uh, even... Even with uh, Nancy Weber, the, you know, the, the thing I did with her was I talked a little faster and I had a little bit of a twang in my voice and, oh, hi, mm -hmm. oh, are you here? You know, and, and it just those little tiny things, you know, she, she, she wasn't like I am speaking to you right now. She, she mm -hmm. was a character that I put on and, and the writing took care of the jokes. You know what I mean? It was just my, you know, when, when she, when she, when she says the little joke about, um, you know, the guy's pretty cute too. And, yeah. You know, those are little, little beats that are very funny and, and give you a chuckle and, and, you know, the stuff with the bikers in the bar, the scene before mm -hmm. that scene. Great. There's a, so there's still a lot of comedy to be mined. And I think that's, that's what I was saying about how John was the director, but Seth kind of worked those comedy beats with everybody. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. I mean, he's the one you go, you, you go to how strict, uh, did you, I mean, uh, did you notice the script being, I heard this, the, the scripts are very strict. You got to stay with the script as much as you can. Yeah. Unless I, you got something amazing coming out of you. I would say with, with, uh, listen, as a co-star coming onto that show and, and having, you know, my, my couple scenes there, I, I am not going to change anything. I'm, you know, on Frasier every now and then, if I, because I've been around enough that if I'm reading something and I'm like, Ooh, what if we said this, I, I'm not afraid to pitch to the producers. We'll be at the table read. And I've leaned over to one of them and said, Hey, what if she did da da da? And he's like, pitch it to Jimmy, Jimmy Burroughs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pitch wow. it to Jimmy Burroughs. And I'm like, yeah. okay, all right, we'll do that. But then they changed the joke and I didn't have to. But anyway, my point is, is that in certain circumstances, when you've been on a show for a little while, you can, you can ask stuff like that and you can, you know, but most of yeah. the time comedy, especially is word yeah. for word. Those writers put every word in that sentence for a reason. And mm -hmm. it just helps with the beat of, of the comedy and they know what they're doing at that level. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, here's a little uh, 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 Easter egg in Ooh. JP's world. What? I knew a little bit about this script long before the season ever came out because a friend of mine auditioned for your role. Oh, the same He's exact so role. Were they a fan too? <laughs> No, they didn't know much about the oh, so see, I, was, I knew so I knew to what to, to do. I knew yeah, what to do in my audition. I think it gave yeah. me an edge. I knew it must how far have. I knew how far to go with the comedy. And I mm. knew I knew not to be over the top on it because it's not, you know, again, it's not family guy, it's not Ted. I, mm. I knew where to be in the pocket for the Orville. And I, I think yeah. that served me in my audition. It, it must have, and the fact that you played it cool, you didn't let them know that you were you're a hardcore Orvillian. No, no, uh, a huge fan. Yeah, they came they came to me to, just to learn more about the Orville, and and then whatever they told me, I just kept it under wraps. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't know exactly what's going on. I'm not going to guess or anything like that. Yeah. We're just going to see what happens when it happens. Uh, 
and it was great and it was so good it was weird at first because in my head i'm thinking of my friend and then i see you in the episode pop i'm like okay that's who they cast okay awesome and then of course we the audience instantly falls in love because you're a, a, a great fun character and you're trying to sell a house to our other friends yes <laughs> Was there any point you thought you might actually get this out, this house sold? Absolutely. When they came out of that uh, basement, and I'm and I have that very last moment with them, we did that. Yeah. Now that was a place where I wouldn't, I won't say I improved, but I did a lot of faces. I and they yeah. settled on one because it, you know it was just a funny beat where they come out, and I'm like, so what do you think? Is it home? And I'm thinking, you know, these two kids are going to buy this house finally. It's the end of my day. I'm going home with a sale, and she's like, we broke up. And and, yeah. uh, and I just follow them out with a oh god I gotta like, come back oh, tomorrow. <laughs> gotta do this again. Uh, how was a uh, uh, wrap after, after after you you wrapped everything? What was your um, uh, post mortem, if you will, of of, of leaving the set? Did you want to leave? Oh, of course uh, not. Of course not. <laughs> I wish I could have hid under uh, you know the the bridge uh, control panel and just yeah. popped out every now and then. <laughs> I, you know, I, I wish she could have somehow got sucked into a time warp and, and sucked onto the Orville. You know, I mean, that's these are things as a fan you fantasize about while you're sitting there on set and you're like, oh, my God. You know, and there there's cool things in this episode, like Norm McDonald's character is there. You know what I yeah. mean? And he's he's in that episode. So there's like there's all these things that are just amazing about this episode that I love so much. And I'm so grateful and so proud to have been a part of such an iconic episode of the Orville. Yeah. Well, is there anything about the episode? I mean, it's, it's a favorite, but it's a, it's a huge topic uh, uh, amongst the audience uh, of the Orville. You know, should, uh, what are your takeaways of the episode? Is there anything that was kind of rubbed you wrong about the logic or what was going on uh, with Gordon or the crew or anything like that? No, I mean, again, I, I think I told you, I think I explained it a little bit how I, I, I totally thought Ed and Kelly were justified in their anger. I think that Gordon was justified in his reaction to them wanting to take him back. I, mm -hmm. you know, I, I will say that I feel like at the end, and I don't know if it got rushed or what was going on when they tell him the story and he's like, oh, well, you did the right thing. Da, 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 da. I think mm -hmm. maybe there could have been a little more, especially because Scott is so amazing. I feel yeah. like that, not that he would have needed to get mad and break things and throw things and how could you, but just a little more of that, that feeling of, wow, I can't believe I did that, but interesting. I, wow, I was actually able to go back and make a life with Laura, you know, what yeah. I mean? just a little more of it affecting him just a little more. And that, that again, yeah. it's not Scott. He was totally directed to do that, I'm sure. Yeah. And, you know, but I, I, I have seen a lot of fans up in arms about that, that they would be so he would be so nonchalant about it, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, he didn't personally experience, experience it. it. Totally, yeah. totally. But you think about you think about that party. He's singing the song. He's still got the cell phone. They pull it out, take a picture. You know what I mean? It, mm. So he, it's still on his mind. It's still something he thinks about. Laura is still, you know, so to imagine, wow, I went off and had a whole life without her. Huh. Yeah. You know, even if even if he's like, whoo, you guys really did the right thing. But I would I would like and you know what? It could be. It could be that that's something that comes back later. Maybe he has some like phantom memories of this alternate timeline, you know, that yeah, we have you know, no idea what's going to happen in season four. We, yes. we want more follow ups to these stories. I mean, there's still stuff from season one that I want follow ups. to. Absolutely. I mean, there, we are ripe for a visit from Priya. Oh, yeah. That's going to be so interesting because she technically wouldn't remember them at all or any of that. And they'll remember her. Yeah. There should be an alternate timeline version yeah. of Priya. I uh, would love a follow-up for that. I would yeah. love to know what happened to the to the um, generational ship from uh, if the star should appear. Oh, yeah. I mean, because they're out there. Yeah. The bio ship, they're out there. They're, they now have the technology, all that stuff. Yeah. Are, people are saying they should become part of the union or they should show up again. Uh, what Besides mm -hmm. this episode, uh, Gordon's story, and, and Laura's story, what other follow-ups are you looking forward to as a fan in season four? Well, um, that's a very good question. I liked, you know, I think they did a really good job of kind of 
wrapping things up in case there wasn't more to yeah. come. And, and I know that was kind of the mindset a little bit yeah. uh, with Seth. With so Seth. I, I would like to see, I would like to see the, the, the doctor and Isaac, how that relationship plays out. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I would hope that they can, for Mark's sake, even let him be in a skin suit <laughs> a little yeah. more. I, I really love seeing his adorable little face. Um, and, and well, I'm surprised still... they took so long to, to have him do that because we established in episode six, that they yeah. have those holographic emitters. I'm like, Oh, they're going to have Isaac use one of those to look like, well, whatever he wants to look like. And they, <laughs> it was a couple seasons before they did that. Totally. Totally. We have um, Archmage Frey saying chief Newton. We have we haven't seen him since uh, episode eleven, I think. Been a long time. Uh, Dex says Gordon needs redemption. I don't know if, if but from Gordon, what? What does he yeah. we'll follow up on that? What does he need? What does he need redemption from? For what? Because yeah, well, also the art Gordon is not the same Gordon that that right. lived that life. Right. So I I mean, there's just ton, there's tons of stuff. The Choctaw, the, the 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 alien race that the Krill are afraid of, or yeah. that are jerks to the Krill. But we already know that there's also some spider people the Krill are afraid of. We haven't seen the 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 Krill uh, uh, interact with those spider people yet. No. Oh, we got a Frasier question. Uh -oh. Brian Dawkins says, "Do, do you have stories about the Frasier episode or Frasier's? Oh." Nephew visits the fire station. That was the best episode of series one. Oh yeah, I love to hear that. That was a very fun episode. Um, they they have uh, so so Fraser's nephew is Niles and Daphne's son, and so he comes to the firehouse, and we've never met him as fire the firehouse people, and he comes in, and we think he's an orphan. And we're like, hey, did you know one of the orphans was coming today? You know, I'm I'm a boss. I'm a Bostonian in this. Uh, in this Frasier, but uh, you know, we mistaken identity is one of the best bits on Frasier. They do it a lot and it's a lot of fun. Um, I'm glad to hear you enjoyed it, Brian. Thanks so much. Brian's a, a, a fan of Frasier, a fan of the Orville, fan of Mythic Quest. Hopefully we get more of that. And if you guys haven't watched Mythic Quest, uh, while you're waiting for the announcement of season four of the Orville, go get caught up on Mythic Quest Absolutely. On, on Apple TV. Absolutely. Um, I'm trying to see what other uh, questions we have here. You guys in the audience, if you have any questions for Renee, throw them out. Throw them out, so I can throw them up <laughs> on the screen. Not yes, please. Not a vomiting thing. <laughs> uh, Sugar Sugar Plum says they want to see Tala's other ear. We've never seen her other ear, just the one. Interesting. Uh, let's see. Oh, Barry says, I wouldn't say redemption. I would say a chance at having a life with Laura. We want, we want uh, Gordon to, you know, we can, we could tell in uh, season two that Gordon's kind of lonely. He's kind of, yeah. you know, his, but uh, I, again, I himself. believe he is having a life with Laura. It's just not our Gordon. It's not the Gordon we know and love. It's the yeah. other Gordon. I think that he is having that life. Yeah, he still has this family. Yeah. Uh, but while that Gordon is having a wonderful life, the, the love of his life, we need our Gordon, yeah. current present Gordon in the 25th century. To find to happiness. Girlfriend. Yeah, find happiness. Me, uh, with, <laughs> I'm going to throw this out there. It's so wrong. But with me as an alien character <laughs> in the future. <laughs> okay, so what if Gordon Malloy visited you, Renee, today? And said, "You're you're the you're the one I've been looking for. You, I found your cell phone. Uh, what would you do as Renee?" Well, first of all, I'd be freaked out that uh, he came from the future. <laughs> that yeah. was another thing in 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 um, Twice in a Lifetime when when he told her and she said, "You know, I I think I've always known." That was a that was kind of a cool moment, but I also wanted to her to explain a little more. Like, what do you what do you mm -hmm. mean you've always known? Let's, because I'm sure it was weird. This perfect guy walked into your life and and yeah. just like knew everything and and knew just the right things to say. That would that would just make me suspicious anyway. Yeah, I probably knew I would never imagine he was from the everything. future, but I yeah. you know. Oh, I thought, story, right. I thought of I thought of storylines that I'm interested in, like with um, I love Bordis. I I love. I'm a fan of the fact that they had a girl 
and they have the whole issue of do we do sexual you know sex reassignment at mm. as a baby to to make her a male and i was like wow this is so because you think about these kinds of things in 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 life in the world and you think in the future these things aren't going to be an issue anymore but then you see mm. that there are cultural differences and things like that that you know persist even even after we've solved you know famine and and a lot of the issues that we face mm. in the world so another I always find, benefit of the alien characters yes i always find uh, that bordis and and his husband are, are interesting I, I i do i do think um the husband's a little what's the husband's name why can't i why isn't it coming why didn't thank you yeah Clyde gets, Clyde gets a little too angry all the time but yeah. i would love to see them have tender moments <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm still wondering if if Clyden is uh is maybe a spy from the Mockland sides that sent him and say, "Hey, go back to your family, get all the right. information you can." I mean, You're right. I hope not. I hope not, but that would be some serious drama in season 4. Yeah, interesting. I do have an episode prop question here from yes. uh from Todd. Yes. Todd says, "Question for Renee. I see the glasses you're wearing today are very similar to the ones you wore in the episode. Did they let you choose your own to wear that day. It's a good look. That's interesting. I don't remember. I'd have to look at the actual episode and see. Most of the time, I ask to wear my glasses because I it's I'm like Tina Fey that way. I like to wear my glasses. Um, mm. It makes me look it makes me look younger if I take them off. You see my wrinkles. Um, <laughs> but that that said, usually on set, even if I ask to wear my glasses, they usually give me other glasses to wear. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know why, but they they do. You know, same with like watches and things. If you have a watch, they'll be like, oh, take your watch off. We'll give you a watch. But it, it just has to do with, you know, if they know that that these are a certain name brand or something. Yeah, so. they can't show it. Well, that concludes our uh, segment prop or not. Ooh, we don't know. And I didn't answer. answer. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Todd, I'll, I'll well, get back to you. I'll, uh, I'll comment on, on, on. Yeah, we're going to need an update in season four when we yes. get an update on that. <laughs> Another question, Movie Mouse. Hey, Renee, could you see one of Nancy's great, great granddaughters serving on the Orville and Isaac doing a huge double take? Oh, because he would like know, right? Yeah. He would know on a molecular level that this was a descendant. Sure. And hopefully oh, she looks yeah. just like her yeah, great, great grandmother. <laughs> well, in, in TV shows and movies, descendants usually do look exactly yeah. like uh, uh, the actor that plays both roles. Yes, uh, that's a good one. I I say that that's a great idea to have I some love descendants it. from your mouth to Seth's ears. <laughs> that's right. Actually, what's funny is I know I try to come up with as many theories as possible and then put them out there because then I know they're going to say no, we can't do that when they're writing. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to. To really get make it so that they really have to think outside of the box when they're coming up with <laughs> stories. Uh, they did that with the um, multiphasic people from Mad Idolatry. Okay. I was for a while I was thinking they ended up being the original Kalon. Ooh. Uh, but I was wrong. Yeah. And, and I but scolded that been interesting. for that. Yeah. It would have been interesting, but what they came up with was even more interesting. It was, it so, was. Uh let's see. Uh Barry says, I don't think Clyden is a double agent because I would it would undo him being redeemed and having that tender moment with Topa. Yeah, it would. Yeah. I want to see more moments like it. that. I want to see yeah. more moments like that. I love that. Even though they're, uh, they're aliens, I still consider it an exploration of the human condition. Yeah. Yeah. Which is one thing I love about the Orville. Yeah. I want to explore his tender side a little more. If we, if we get more. So does Bordas. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, Harkman says, "Time to start working on thrice in a lifetime." That's when. That's when we get the uh, your descendant in, uh, on the show. That would be great. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Uh, what was I want to say? Okay, season four. Season four. Now we're just gonna have fun talking about season four guest stars. Who would you love besides yourself? Who would you love to see guest star in season four? Because uh, when I was talking to Rena Owen, who plays Havina, she said season four, all the actors, the show is so good, and actors want to do good work on a good show that yeah. she predicts there's going to be so many big actors Absolutely. asking to be on the show. Yeah. 
I mean, that's what's happening with Fraser this season. You know, Mm -hmm. Uh, one one, I I don't think I'm spoiling anything by saying this because there was a press release that I saw and some photos. But in the one episode I've done so far this season of Fraser, Amy Sedaris was. Oh, I love her. She's my new best friend. I adore her. Um, You know, so great shows get better and better and then more and more, you know, named name actors, as they call them. I, I always feel I always feel so uh, disappointed when I read a breakdown that says looking for name actors. I'm like, I have a name. Yeah, they all have names. <laughs> first name and last, usually. Well, not all have la- but, last names, but most of them have first and last names. Yeah, but I mean, you know, so it, it ends up being if there is a season four, you know, uh, people they know and like. What it, what happens in 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 Hollywood is that people love to work with people they have fun with. You know what I mean? Mm. And if there's roles on on shows and people remember you from something and they had a good experience with you, they're going to think of you and they're going to bring you back and they're going to find a way to use you. And, you know, and I don't mean people who are in like, you know, do smaller roles like me, um, but I mean, people who are like, you know, the friends of Seth's and, you know, John yeah. Favreau. I, I, I'm surprised John hasn't appeared uh, somewhere in this, right. in this series yet. And may, who knows? I, maybe he has and we just don't know. <laughs> That's true. He could have been an alien, one of those uh, absolutely uh, scenes with a ton of of people in them, kind absolutely. of aliens in them. I would love to see Jonathan Frakes. Yes, I would love to see uh, Giovanni Ravisi. I yes, think would be Giovanni great. is He's amazing. Friendly. He's amazing, and a he super would be a nice great Kalon. Yeah, with a skin suit on and emotions. There's yes. so many options. So many. Uh, em- Emily M has a a, a question. Do they require you to take off jewelry on set too, like wedding yes. rings, etc.? Yes, yes, yes. They do. They do. Even even when my character is married, if I have, I don't have my rings on today. But if I have my ring on, they'll be like, "Take your rings off." And here's if you want to be, if your character's married, and they'll give you a just like a plain wedding band or something like that. Yeah, yeah. You pretty I, much you don't use your own stuff. That's what the prop department is for. <laughs> that's why they got to have jobs. Otherwise, you're stealing work from them by bringing yes. your own well, stuff. Well, here's the real reason behind all that. They have to recreate that to shoot the scene again or to, yeah. you know, the maybe something went wrong and they need to do it again. Well, and I come back to set, oh, you don't have your wedding ring today. You know what I mean? So they need to be responsible for all that stuff from that scene that that character wears. That makes sense. That makes, yeah. uh, Barry says, what was it like sharing screen time with Ann Winters and Mark? So Annie and Mark were phenomenal. Um, they are fun. They're very uh, they're very good at their jobs. Uh, I follow both of them on social media, so I mm-hmm. you know was familiar with kind of their their day to day stuff as well. So it was really cool to be able to hang with them and and have conversations. Uh, talked a lot with Mark about acting, and you know he's a Brit. So, uh, you know, we talked uh, uh, about some things uh, about the UK and just acting in general. I, I, I really admire British actors because they really take the craft seriously over there. Their the school is is studying is so amazing. Uh, you know, well, you get a little jaded when you're out here in Los Angeles and people are just like, I'm going to be an actor. And, and you know. Everybody says that. Out yeah, there. I'm going to be an actor. You know, I studied. I didn't study in 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 uh, London, but I studied. And and you know, you just start to. One of the things with um, self taping is that it becomes an open market. Meaning, and, and it's great. It's great that people can tape from wherever. But you still need to be in Los Angeles or New York or Atlanta at the very least to really book these roles because they're not, the productions aren't, unless it's, unless you're a very specific reason they would be casting you from somewhere else, the, the productions aren't going to pay to bring you to Los Angeles or New York or Atlanta or, or Canada, yeah. or wherever it happens to be filming. So um, while I love the convenience of a good self tape, just being, you know, in this room with some lights and the camera on me and doing my thing and not having to sit in Los Angeles traffic, there yeah. is a part of me that is like, wow, I gave up a lot to live in Los Angeles. Yeah. I, I like to say to people who are like, oh, I'm so, how did you get on the Orville? And I'm like, well, you too can move to Los Angeles and, and bust your butt for 20 years and yeah. you might get a part on the Orville. <laughs> yeah. You basically just emailed them. <laughs> 
<laughs> with your with your self tape. Right, right. I you know the casting people requested me, so there was a little. They had to look at. They That's probably good. looked at some of my other work. They they saw my resume. They saw my headshot, and I was you know lucky to be plucked out of probably the thousands of people who submitted for that role. Mm. Um, and then got to self tape, and then got pared down from that, and then able to, you know, do it was just, again, as I said, a dream come true. But yeah, back yeah. to your question. It was amazing. Annie and, and by the way, it's Annie, A-N-N-E. She's, it, it's just spelled different, but it's Annie. Mm, um, okay. Yeah. Annie and uh, Mark were fa fabulous. And I'll never forget Annie because I was wrapped at the end of I want to say uh, day one or day two. And so they wrapped and everybody's leaving. And I was sitting there and Annie came up to me and she said, why are you, st we're, we're done. Why are you just sitting here? I said, I have to wait for someone to come and get me. Cause you know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not yeah. that important. So I have to wait yeah. to be, you know, escorted somewhere. Yeah. And, and she's like, Oh, that's ridiculous. Just come on. <laughs> you wow. know, so they yeah, were super nice and, and just had a great time with them. They're super fun. Wow. That's um, well, getting the role with self tape, I know is, a lot of people don't realize it's extra, extra tough because the casting director or uh, whoever's watching the tape, they're not being able to pick up your vibe right. being in the room with a person. Right. I know John Cassar hates self, yeah. uh, you know, having to cast with self tape, but you have to do what you got to do yeah. <laughs> in tough times. Uh, but you know, you're just not picking up the vibe. So it's great that you were able to do something in, in your audition uh maybe you should put your tape out if you still have it that'd be a great i do video. still have it i do still have it i think yeah, i have good. done i have done i maybe on one of my social media sites i i did um a comparison of here's the audition and here's what and here's he the shot. role so you can That's see perfect. them side by side they should, i think people people should just do that in the industry just have yeah. the audition with the actual yeah. the, the end product yeah i keep um, them all whether i book them or not i i keep i have a i just recently i i would have been able to share it with you right now but i just recently copied all that over to an external drive to free up some space on my mac but um yeah i keep them all i i have a booked and non-booked i have a callback and pin file and i just drop everything in there so i have all my self tapes hundreds and hundreds of them hundreds and hundreds that's the that's thing about acting takes. Yeah, you have to audition hundreds of times just to get maybe a handful of roles. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and here here's the tr the truth of acting for anybody interested. Your yeah. job is auditioning. Yeah. All the rest is fun. <laughs> yeah. All the rest is play. Your yeah, job and, is auditioning. And auditioning and figuring out how to get time off if you have a regular job to go and audition. I've been I, very good about that. I am I always put myself in the situation for my day job. I'm very lucky that I, I just knocked on wood. I'm very lucky yeah. that I have um a great day job that that supports me and pays my mortgage and everything else is just gravy. So I'm able to I I have complete flexibility in my day job. And if they don't give it to me, I'll leave. You know, I, I, you know, again, I've already done one episode of Frasier and I had to take a week off and I only knew like a week and a half before. So I had to say to them, Hey guys, I'm going to be off this week. And da, 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 da. And they're like, oh, okay, that's fine. You know, they don't care. I'm in August. I'm going to be in Edinburgh fringe festival doing stand up for eight nights. And oh, nice. that I needed to take off, you know, a week and a half for that. Now the caveat there is I said, listen, I'm only going to be doing comedy at night for a short time. So all day I'll be free and I can do some work. So, you know, you I'm not go. really taking off, but I am out of, out of the country. Out of the country, out which is something country. we can do again. Yes. Uh, back when you filmed the, this episode, going out of the country was not an option for anybody. Not so fun. Uh, Archmage Frey says, did Mark chat in his real voice or stay in Isaac mode? Well, hopefully, hopefully Mark doesn't like to keep his process secret. But uh, yeah, no, he was just British. <laughs> yeah, he, he did not walk British around like Isaac. Time. Yeah. I mean, his voice is, I mean, very similar, but of course he's way softer and just way more human when he's, when he's, when he's Mark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hey, Mark Lawrence, huge supporter of Talking the Orville and the Orville and a lot of awesome other things. Hi, Mark. JP, couldn't chat until now, was on the road. Well, I hope you're safe. And, and I'm glad you're off the road so you can uh, stop in and say hello. Very good to see you, Mark Lawrence. We're, Hi, Mark. we're chatting with Renee uh, Pizzotta, Orville superstar, <laughs> Frasier extraordinaire. Woohoo. Uh, oh, it's a great suggestion. Uh, let's see, where did it go? The chat's going fast. Movie Mouse says, um, 
Kiefer Sutherland would be a great guest star in season four of the Orville. He would be. He'd be, he'd be a, a great, great krill. He'd be a great bad guy. Yeah. Yeah, he'd be a bad guy. That would be great. And he'd be hardcore. He's got a lot of experience with John Kazar. Yeah, Kazar and him go way back. So yeah. Let's see. Mark says, now that Mark's can chat, so it would be funny if she popped in another episode. Could be a descendant that has a similar career in the 25th century. Okay. Yeah. What would how you about, think your descendant would do in the 25th yeah. century? How about they just always they just keep throwing me in as a realtor in whatever yeah. century we're in? I think that would be fabulous. <laughs> but there's no money. You just you have to yeah. reallocate where people get to stay. Yes. Uh Dex says. Uh, question what's the hardest part of being an actor also do you think that being on the Orville is opening up the door for more grand opportunities for you the hardest part of being an actor is just the you know I for me it for me I love being an actor right it, it because I have this other job that pays my bills I don't struggle as much as some of my friends that I see so I, I, for me, the hardest part of being an actor is just at, at my, at my now advanced age, I'm going <laughs> to say learning my lines is the hardest part of being an actor. But for most people, it's financial. And I say that, especially now that we're in the streaming world, you would think I'm a recurring guest star on a hit television show that I would be like, oh, I don't need a day job anymore. Mm -hmm. No, I, I no, <laughs> let me just say no. And I'm not complaining. I'm so grateful for every moment I get on Frasier. I love it. And and same thing for this with, with the Orville. You said, is, did it open up more grand opportunities for me? Um, unfortunately, because, because of COVID and during all that stuff, um, and then remember, we came out of all that and then went into strikes. And during mm -hmm. the strikes, we as actors weren't able to promote our stuff, right? So things like me being a recurring guest star on Frasier, none of the casting people know unless they watch Frasier because I mm -hmm. wasn't able to promote being on the show during those strikes. Um, so that created, you know, the momentum that you would think I would build it didn't get to happen. Yeah. Um, you know, I, again, not complaining. I, I work so much compared to some of my friends. So I'm not complaining at all. I'm grateful for every chance at an audition that I get and I will continue to be. And I'm in this for the long haul. This for me isn't a hobby or something that I'm just, you know, trying mm -hmm. out for a little while. I've been doing it a long time, theater, film, television, all of it, comedy. Um, and I'm going to keep doing it because it feeds my soul. Yeah. So it's hard for me to say what's the hardest thing about it, because for me, you know, there's technical things that are hard, like learning lines, finding time to really focus at my level. Again, because I have to have a day job, sometimes mm -hmm. I have to split my focus between things. So it makes it a little harder for me to really give what I want to give in the moment when I'm doing these self tapes. Also, self tapes, when you get a lot of auditions. This is something I, I just a couple of weeks ago stopped myself and said, you have got to start paying attention to your point of view. Pay attention yeah. to your point of view in this scene. Because what happens is when you're, oh, another self-tape, let's put everything up and let's do the scene and send it off as quick as we can. And you lose what's fun about acting, which is exploring that character and really having a point of view about what you're doing. Yeah. Um, but again, uh, as far as it like opening up doors for me, I mean, I can only hope that, you know, maybe in the back of Seth MacFarlane's mind, he's like, oh, what about that woman who played the realtor? You know, yeah. I don't know. Now that I've also lost 50 pounds, I've changed my casting a bit. I used to just be mm. kind of the, the fat, funny girl. And now I've changed my casting a little bit. I'm, you know, a middle aged woman. So now I can play moms and you know things like that mm. probably wouldn't have cast me friend you know girl next door kind of character still funny and still quirky um but not the 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 fat woman so you're a firefighter now yes that's right Ooh, look at these this, look at these guns man you can put out a, you can start a fire with those things <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I was still I was still a little heavy though in season one. So the, I, I'm sure people are like, "What? How is that woman a firefighter?" And I'm like, "I'll come on." I'll yeah, show that's you. right. 
Yeah, it's also called acting. She can play yes. anything, yes. anything she wants to be. Exactly. Uh, yeah, a lot of people don't realize the climate in, well, I say Hollywood, but really it's an entertainment production. The climate is so different than it used to be. Like you were yes. saying, you know, the difference between being on a primetime show, what you're what you're making, what, you, what you're being paid, uh, and a streaming show, it, it, it's so different. All the, so different. you know, the strike from decades ago was really helping actors that were on television because streaming didn't exist yet. And then yeah. streaming came along and they can do kind of whatever they want because they're not under the the rules from the previous contract. And as we know now, uh, TV shows are like 10 episodes. Right. So a lot of people worry about the actors even being available from the Orville to do a fourth season. And I'm like, I'm not worried at all because even those actors who are completely huge and famous to us, they're not going to have the easiest time getting roles that are that are more than a couple of weeks, a couple of days, maybe totally. a month or two totally. uh, of work. So I, I feel everybody will be available for the next season of The Order. Yeah. I've heard that in August things might pick up a little bit, but things have been pretty slow. I mean, again, knock on wood, I've had a few auditions. I got pinned for something last week. I say so this is how I just do it and let it go. I can't even remember what I was pinned for. Uh, St. Dennis, I think it's called. It's a new medical comedy show. But, you know, it, it's like the, these things come and go and you're, you just have to do your, your work and, and move on. You can't yeah. uh, you can't hold on to it. That's something that's hard for a lot of actors, too. Um, is, is your name Deck or is, is that short for December? The question that's still on there about. The I've been going with Deck. We've okay. had this conversation. So that, that's, but I, <laughs> that's probably the hardest part of acting for a lot of people is letting it go. You know, every now and then I'll get a great audition like for the Orville and I'll, you know, again, I told you, I, I just kind of let it go and went on about my, my day. But then when they pinned me for it, I was like, oh my God, how am I going to function as a human being? Because I might be on the Orville, you know, mm -hmm. but you really just have to do your work and let it go. And the next one comes in, do your work and let it go. Yeah, the auditioning, I kind of think of it as like uh, uh, picking your six numbers for for the lottery that week. Absolutely. You, you pick them and then you, you buy your, your ticket and then you just forget about it until, Absolutely. Uh, until and then, you get pinned. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, we don't get for streamers, like again, for Frasier, it's on Paramount Plus. We don't get residuals for that. They did show um, the first two episodes on CBS. So from the we get residuals from the one episode that the firemen me and the other two firemen were in, we get residuals for those. So, you know, again, I can't complain. I love every minute of it. Um, you know, it's just, there was a time when something, a role like that would be a game changer for an actor. Yeah. And yeah. it's not changing my game yet. Are you going to be available for season four? <laughs> Make sure you're available. <laughs> Of course, of course. We're, we're going to push to get you a call. Yeah, let's start um, a campaign. Bring the realtor back. <laughs> Yeah. Barry says, what was the greatest part of being on the Orville? For me, hands down, working with Seth MacFarlane. I mean, how were the, and I have a personal question. How were the snacks? How was crafty on set? They were good. Um, there were like, I, I think when I, I said I was, we were having a chat over some smoothies. So there was like a smoothie truck that came, you know, snacks are always good on set. There, you hardly find a, a set that doesn't have a good crafty table. So I, I would be at the crafty table. I've, I've told them many times, if just give me a job on the Orville, I will just bring people coffee. That's all I need to do. As long as I get to be there helping the show get made in some way, somehow. Uh, Deck says it's pronounced Deck as in Declan. Okay. Deck. So now we know. Deck Simber. And nice. Deck says they're a Brit. Ah, I love me some Brits. Come see me in uh, in Edinburgh. How far are you? How far are you from the Fringe Festival in August? Oh, hopefully close. That would be awesome. That, that would be, be so awesome. cool. Any of you UK the out there, come on up. What's um, what is there? Was there anything tough about uh, filming the episode that you were in? Uh, yeah, yeah, running up and down those stairs. <laughs> That's right. Running up and down the stairs. In heels, what no was, less. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, every time I wear heels, it just <laughs> It's hard, my isn't feet. it, JP? Yeah. Uh, what was it like? Okay, so was the first the first uh, uh, work that you did on the show was in the, the neighborhood at that house? Well, it was a little... Uh, so they. Uh, this was a weird thing that happened. I 
came to set one day. They got me all hair and makeup. Then I, I went to do rehearsals and they were working out the uh, Annie and Mark stuff, you know, yeah. how they do all the stuff on the floor. And I think it was taking longer than they expected. So we wrapped before we shot in that soundstage. And then when I came back the next week, we went to the house. So actually we shot the house first and then came back and shot on the lot, the, the basement scene. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's see. The snacks were mainly alien food that us humans can't eat. Oh. Well, I wouldn't like that. I, mm -hmm. I would prefer some, at least alien food that I could eat uh, or just human food. I'm, I'm a fan of that. Yeah. Human food's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Deck agrees. True. Hollywood's been through a lot lately. They really have. It's, I think it's the actors that have been through a lot, but how's it been for you? I mean, how long have you been, have you been acting? How many years? Um, I, all my life. I, I, I've been acting for at least 20, 20 years professionally. Okay. So you've been dealing with the, the prime time, the regular television yep. and cable television world. What was it like for you when it moved over to starting to be mostly streamer? Yeah. Projects? yeah. Honestly, it's just less money. That, that really is what it comes down to, to be honest. Um, it, it used to be that, like, I still get great residuals from my appearance on, on the Orville, you know? Um, I, I get great residuals from being and being the Ricardos and, and just saying one line and stomping grapes with Nicole and, and you know what I mean? So, but Frasier, not so much, <laughs> you know? So it, yeah. that's the difference. And again, oh, I can't believe I'm complaining. I'm not complaining, guys. I, I'm so, <laughs> I'm just telling you the, the truth of what the business is like now. So it's, yeah. It, I'm, I'm grateful. Again, the, the problem is, is that most of us as actors will say, I'll work for free. I just want to be on the show, you know, yeah. and, and that unfortunately that can't be the way you sustain a life. It's no, great you got to pay, you got to pay the bills. Exactly. It might be great if you're in your twenties and just starting out, but you know, there comes a certain point where you, you gotta, it's a business, it's show business. Yeah. And so on the business end of it, we have to be able to, you know, get paid. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. What, how have you, not, have you noticed a change in the competition level since when you started till now? Yeah. And again, because of self tapes. So um, for casting, I guess it's great. They're, they're able to see way more, way more actors now. So now, like you were jokingly saying, it's a lottery ticket. I really do feel it's more of a lottery ticket now because mm -hmm. again, Tapes can come in from all over. Um, they can watch maybe 300 tapes as opposed to 20 people coming in the room, right? Yeah. They're not going to have 300 people come in the room. They're going to narrow it down and have 20, their 20 top people come in the room, do their thing and, and move on. Um, now we're doing the self-taping. We have a window to do it. They, mm -hmm. they tell us we don't have to memorize. There were out of the strike came some rules around how much copy they can give us in that yeah. first audition, no more than four pages. You don't have to memorize, but you know, let's be real. If you're not off book, it's going to be a little weird if you're looking at your yeah. page. Um, and people, you'll just you'll impress them more. They'll notice you more if you're off book. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> as long as you're, as long as you're not in your head about, Oh, what's my next line? You know, as long yeah, as you're right. able to, you know, I mean, I look forward to the day where I book a film or something that I, I always hear like all these actors, Oh, I had two months to work on this role. And I'm like, Oh, to be able to do that, to like take a script and really be able to, you know, do the breakdown and analyze it properly and, and really spend time creating a character is just the dream. You know, that's why theater is so much fun to me. Yeah. Although even doing theater in Los Angeles is tough because it's rushed. You know, you have two, two weeks of rehearsal and then you run for like four weeks and that's it, you know? Oh, wow. So it, 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 again, you don't get that time to really explore and do the parts that attract me to acting to begin with. Let's clarify that we clarified this earlier, but uh, Mark must have missed it. Uh, Mark, uh, Lauren says, so that was an actual basement house in the greater Los Angeles area, a rare no, gym. No, Mark. Nope. It was, that was the soundstage. So that was on the Fox lot. Yeah. The basement was Fox lot. The interior of the house was a real house and the yes. exterior of the house was a real house. Yes. And they were the same. That's not always the case too. Sometimes they'll shoot an exterior of a house and then use another house for the interior. This was both the same house. Inside and out, it was yep. the same house. Yep. Maybe we'll see a descendant of the house in season four. 
Let's see. Uh, Archmage says, maybe there'll be a juicy role for you in the Naked Gun remake. That's Woo! right. Seth MacFarlane is working on a remake for the Naked Gun movies starring Liam Neeson, who I think is the perfect uh, uh, person amazing. to cast. Amazing. Also an actor from the Orville. Yep. Yep. I, I doubt we get uh, we get to reprise his role because he's playing a character from thousands of years ago. Yeah. Uh, but wouldn't it be great? Yes. How would you feel about being in, in Naked Gun? Oh my God! Are you kidding me? That that just brings up memories of the '80s to me, and and you know, I I would love it. I would love it. You know, you you guys are you guys are great to even think that anybody would consider me for any of these, but. <laughs> I can dream. Thank you for letting me dream. Well, we can dream too. No, I love the idea of bringing back Nick again because that type of comedy yes. isn't done very often. That exactly. kind of that sarcastic, dry yeah. type of comedy that's very literal, like saying something very literally, but showing you that literally that's actually a ridiculous statement, things like yeah. that. Uh, Albert uh, was no, not Albert Brooks, uh, Mel Brooks, Mel Brooks, yeah, uh, that style, which they're bringing out uh, space balls. Are you a fan oh, of space balls? I am, I am. Space balls. It's funny, you don't, it's funny, you don't look druish, yeah, you don't look druish, uh, good stuff. Um, what episode of the Orville do you wish you could have been on? What role do you wish you could have played on the Orville in an, a different episode? Wow. Um, we're going deep. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to explore uh, every possibility of you. Well, and you know, there's a, there's a lot of amazing uh, actors on the Orville that it's like, you, you just look at them and you, and you're like, Oh God, that, what a juicy role. But in new horizons, I don't know the character's name. Um, let me see if I can pull it up really quick in guys are going to kill me that i don't know her name um maybe we know also i find this in the council when they when they were um i don't remember if it was domino or midnight blue um let me see let me see if i can pull her up real quick i know this doesn't make for interesting uh <laughs> oh no it, it's all good it's ah. all good Renee Owen. You think I would remember? It's either oh, Rena Owen. Habina. Rena. Oh, yeah. Mwah. Yeah. What yeah, that an is such amazing a good role and an amazing well, actor. Uh, I might have to. Uh, well, I'll talk to you uh, later on after this because I am putting something together uh, to do um, a panel of, about stuff going on in Havina's world. Oh. We'll see if you're if you're willing to be available or not, but we'll yeah, talk yeah, about that later. I saw her. I saw the interview you did with her too, and and she was just fabulous. Oh yeah, we just kept. I was supposed to have like ten minutes with her, but we went for thirty or forty minutes. Uh, she's great. We just had such a great chat. Yeah, <laughs> um, she's great. but yeah, uh, that that Havina is such a great role. Um, yeah, if you could, that'd be a great alien to play as well. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, if I could be on the crew, I, I you know, I, I love, I wonder, I, I would say, can, can Penny's, can, can the doctor have a, a, a an assistant, you know, that'd be a great, that would be a great thing to be like her nurse. <laughs> yeah. They're actually, um, well, it's not super public knowledge right now, but there's actually a ton of people that work in, in the, uh, the medical region of the ship. She has a uh, a bunch yeah. of nurses and assistants. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've only seen maybe a couple of them, but there's yeah. actually they a, a whole come in crew and down there. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole crew down there. Of course. Um, I won't of course, be able to, there should be. Yeah. I won't be able to give out all the information until September 24th or 25th when the guide to the Orville comes out from Dark Horse Comics. Nice. Uh, have you heard about that? The book yet? The guide yeah. to the Orville? Yes. Yeah, written by Andre Bormanis. I have uh, an advanced copy of it. Oh, lucky you. I know so much about the Orville universe. And when you were comparing it to like Star Trek and Star Wars, yes, the history is there in this book. And it compares, if if not, it goes beyond yeah. uh, 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 even Star Trek. I mean, we know the history of Star Trek. Yeah. You'll now know a little bit more of the history of the Orville universe. That's great. And it is, wow. That's great. 
yeah, it, it, it's why well, I, I can't get into it. But if you yeah. guys want to pre-order it, the link is in the description below I'm writing this video. it down. So here is something that I want to ask you. Sure. Okay, you film the episode. You're done. You you go back to your life for what was the time difference between when you filmed it to when you first saw the episode? Um, I filmed it. I want to say in April. Hang on, I'm gonna look at a. I'm gonna look at an Instagram post of me standing under the sign. When did it air? Do you know? Mm, it must have been July, maybe early July, late June. Here we go. Probably it's early July. June June 2nd was when the new season started. Yeah. And so I think I maybe five. filmed it in March because I think I filmed being the Ricardos in April and that was after that. So it was probably March. So for this, it wasn't that long of a wait. I mean, yeah, that's just March a few April. months. That's pretty yeah. great. That's Usually not too like bad. Usually so, it's right? a long time. You wow. know, like Frasier will be a long time. It, 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 it probably won't be until October, maybe even later. Cause last yeah. season we were done shooting in May. This season we started shooting in May and last okay. season it came out in October. So I don't know if they're going to tighten up the editing time or what, you know? So. Well, what was it like? Here's the real question. Okay. So you, you, you finish your, your days of shooting, uh, you go home, you, you're doing your life, you're back in your life. Now it's time for your episode twice in a lifetime to air and you're going to watch it on probably on um on hulu, hulu or on on hulu as, as soon as it's available i assume oh yeah midnight the <laughs> night before <laughs> oh wow okay that's the way you do it yeah what was but, it like but you start that episode i watched all of them at midnight the night before so that's how you do it me too so, Again, wasn't I wasn't so excited about, you know, yay, I'm on it. And I, of course, I watched it. And of course, I loved it. And, but on it, let's be honest, on the first watch through, when it got to my scene, I was just judging the crap out of myself. But other than that, the episode, again, it's, it literally is one of my favorite episodes. And it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with Scott Grimes, you yeah. know, but watching it and, and you know, we have a in our back room, we have an 85 inch television. So sometimes nice. it's like, I love to just sit down on the floor with some popcorn and, and just, you know, and that was one of those times. Was your husband with you or did yes. you have friends or whole party we did have some anything? friends. We had some friends over for that. Yeah. What did your we, friends usually, think? Did they think it was the best episode ever? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. A lot of my friends um, weren't familiar with the Orville until that episode. And I actually said to them, okay, guys, they loved it. And I was like, okay, first of all, you at least have to go back to season two and watch yes. the first episode that relates to this, but yeah. really you should watch the whole thing. And and so really, many of yeah. you did, they were converted to fans right away. That's it's great. That's what it's all show. about. It's yeah, such it a good is. show. And it's been, it's personally for me, cause you know, I've, for, I've been covering this since 2017 yeah. and we have this great community here. But outside of this community for years, I was like, nobody knows about the Orville. No one's know, really talking about the Orville that much. That has changed yeah. ever since uh, New Horizons. Every single day, there are more and more posts and pe of, of people saying, I, I just started watching New Orville. It's amazing. Why did I sleep on the show so many times? Yep. Uh, what would you have to say to people that have not discovered the Orville yet? Oh, you definitely need to give it a chance. It's so amazing. If you like sci-fi, you should be watching this show. If you like character development and relationships and humor, you should be watching this show. You know, I mean, Absolutely. It, it, it's one of the best out there. It's an experience. You should be watching this. It, it is an experience. And I've learned, I've be, I feel like I've become a better person since 2017, ever since starting the Orville and then obsessing over it like I do. Sure. I feel like I've learned so much. I've learned how to treat people uh, in a different way, uh, how to see things in yep. a different way, how to think about my own life uh, and my own future in, in a certain way. And production, since I've had a, a little bit of a, a relationship over the years with production, I've learned so much from them. Um and like you said, they're just great people. Yeah, they are. They are. And the best sci-fi gives us all those feelings. 
You yeah. know, the best sci-fi does that. It, it teaches us about life. It teaches us about how to treat our fellow humans or people who are different than us, you know? Yeah. Because it all usually turns out people that are different than us are not as exactly. different as we thought they were. Exactly. Yeah. That's especially, the moral. especially these mocklings. We, yes. we still think they're different, but really they're not. <laughs> Most of, like with, with mocklings, you know, there's, there's the utopian future of, of the union and the people of earth. And there's a certain way they've grown out of a lot of the, the troubles that we have now, or we've had in the past. And Mocklins aren't doing anything different. They're just versions of us from either now or the past. And the show is just asking us questions about ourselves through the Mocklins. And, 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 and that makes us think, cause I'm always like, well, people who don't know history are doomed to repeat it. Right. So I think Mocklins are teaching us about our own history. Or yep. what would happen if uh, the things that humanity used to do, if it was, if they never stopped doing it, it just kept being encouraged to to go that route. Uh, of course, I want to get into the Mocklin conversation on another day. Uh, lots of things to talk about there, and lots yeah. of things I'm I'm looking for updates in season four about what's going on with the Mocklins, their yeah. society. How did yeah. all this start? Yeah. Yeah, lots uh, of lots of they have plenty of story to explore. There, it, it, I'm sure that there is an uh, uh, endless well of stories and characters that Seth has in his brain somewhere that are dying to come out. Yeah, I have no doubt. Even when I talked to Mark Jackson about this is back in season three, uh, towards the end of season three, uh, he was telling me because you know we didn't know if there's going to be a season four or not. I found out just a couple months later they're they're going to do more. But at the time he said, there's no way this is the end of the Orville. There's so much more stories uh, yeah. to tell. They're never going to run out of stories. Because How would you, you know, feel about a movie if if not a season four? I would, of course, love the movie, but I don't want a movie until the very, very end. Until we get to season 10 or 11. Then we can do a movie. <laughs> a movie that will wrap it all up, but yeah. still tell a fresh new story and catch up audiences that don't know much uh, about the previous seasons. Much like um, uh, Ser uh, the Firefly movie, Serenity. Yes. I, I think they did a great job. At, Another great at, show. Yeah, uh, uh, wrapping up a show, but also gaining a new audience just yeah. through that one uh, uh, medium there. Yeah. Well, we have been uh, talking for, oh my gosh, an hour and a half. Wow. So I think it's probably time to wrap this up. I got birthday things to do. Yes. Today's my birthday. Happy birthday yeah. to you. Everybody. Happy birthday to you. I can hear you all. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, it's, I keep forgetting it's my birthday. Every time I get a message, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's today, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> uh, but I'm glad I was able to spend my birthday with you. I was glad to talk to you. I hope to keep chatting with you. And uh, I'm probably going to... Um, find some great clips from this chat that we've had and put them up separately as well. Great. Uh, you know, you've got to advertise, advertise, advertise when, when you're a content creator. And the only way to really do that is to put up more stuff. Thank you, Samwise. Samwise says happy birthday. Barry says happy birthday. A lot of you have said happy birthday throughout the conversation. Renee, I assume it's not your birthday today. Nope. October. But I would like to wish you a happy birthday. Thank so you. Happy birthday to you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you guys for for in, watching us just nerd out about the Orville. Uh, is there any departing words you want to want to leave for fans of the Orville and the Orville in general? Listen, just keep hope alive. Maybe we'll see some more soon. I think that would be fabulous, and and hopefully uh, it goes on and on for much longer. Much, much longer. I mean, I'm much. pretty sure we'll probably get 10 episodes per season. So we're going to need a lot of seasons. Yeah. Because because we're not running out. And Seth is a, a genius. I think he, he he's got a lot us. going on, that guy. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Renee. Um, I'm going to play the outro here. We can chat afterwards if you like. And um, thank you all for some buttons here. Jumping in. Nice to see thank everybody. Thanks a lot. A lot more talking to Orville coming up in the future.